Hey everyone, how's it going? Happy New Year. It's 2019 and I'm kicking off the year with this awesome little free tutorial that is going to show you how to create this effect that you're seeing on screen. Um, we're not looking at a render, we're looking at a uh, viewport using the EV uh, shaders, some grease pencil objects to create this effect, not only in viewport, but to render out a really cool anime looking laser blast effect. There's a few things that we're going to cover in this tutorial, okay? I'm going to show you how to get a light color effect on top of your EV Tune shader. I'm also going to show you how to add a grease pencil object and add a couple of effects so you see that this glow is actually a grease pencil effect. Uh, and finally, I'm going to show you how to uh, add a, tra a locked track constraint to that grease pencil so that if I was to say rotate this camera, can you see how the grease pencil always seems to face the camera, okay, in the relevant axis, okay? So if I was to say, for instance, uh, rotate it in another axis, you can actually see that it rotates a little bit um, differently, um, and, but it's always this face that is facing the camera. And this is really good for animated shots, okay? where you don't want to give away the game that you are using a 2D layer to represent a 3D effect. Let's take a look at the scene. Let's break this down uh, and take a look at what we've got in the scene one bit at a time. So first and foremost, we've got these guns with the uh, EV Tune shader on there. And I'm just going to enable a couple of lights to show you this, okay? But there's one more thing that's going on with this shader. So I'm just gonna open up a window here. Let's take a look at the, the shader itself, okay? So obviously I've uh, changed some parameters here, shadow banding, grow shrink, etc., etc. I've just got a duotone here of uh, this sort of pinkish color. Um, I chose something that's not blue because I want the laser blasts to be blue and I want them to really show up. Now, there's one more thing that's going on here. I've run that shader through just a simple diffuse shader, okay? Now this can be any shader you want, but I found that this one renders quite quickly. Um, it's very low fuss and it gives us the exact lighting effect that I want. Why do I do this? Because the diffuse shader is a BSDF shader and this EV Tune shader, if you look inside it, there's actually just a bunch of nodes which is changing everything to an RGB format, okay? And uh, while it will respond to light direction or rotation, and will even cast shadows of its own, it won't respond to the color of the light. This is a quick and dirty way to make it respond to light color. Um, and so what have we got to cast that light? Well, we've got a couple of point lights, okay? And I've created these lights to cast sort of a bluish tinge. So if I was to change that tinge to say like a green or a yellow, uh, green would probably be the most uh, effective. You'll see that that actually affects it, you know, as would the, the energy. Okay, so we can have a very uh, bright energy, um, a larger radius if we needed to, all sorts of things but that material now responds to the color. And this is very important because what we want the color to do is to have this kind of a bluish tinge uh, so that the grease pencil laser blast, it'll give the illusion that that laser blast is a point of, is a source of light. So then finally, we've got these laser blasts, okay? So let's take a look at what's going on with these. I'm just gonna hide this one for now. Just hide everything else so we can focus on this laser blast. Now you'll see this blue line, this dotted line here, which is uh, now going all the way back to the camera. All right, there's a few things going on. First off, uh, let's take a look at the grease pencil object itself. You'll see that uh, it's got a couple of things. It's got this laser blast on one axis, okay? And it's got this circle that I've drawn on another plane. In Grease Pencil, you can actually draw on more than one plane, okay? It's not just locked to a 2D plane, all right? So let me show you, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so we're in top view over here. Let's go into draw mode, control tab, draw, and uh, I'll just collapse this window over here. I've chosen a marker to draw with. I've created uh, just a simple fill white 
uh, material which I can draw things with. Now, when you're drawing in orthographic view, you don't need to worry about the drawing plane constraints. When you need to worry about those is when, let's say for example, we want top x, y, we rotate the view to have, have a look at what's going on and we want to draw in that plane. Now we know that those little bits that we're adding will be drawn only on that plane's constraint. If we go into front view, for instance, okay, we go into front x, z, and now we can add some circles Okay, so maybe we want some Kirby crackle here or something like that. Okay, let's add to it like, you know, little things like that. All right. So just in top view, I'm just going to get the eraser and let's just erase these extra bits. We don't really need them. Okay. And the reason I did this is because from the camera view, this circle, okay, won't be perceived as flat even when this is looking okay, but you can already see that if you go past the horizon, how it appears to be flat, all right? But because we're gonna be roughly in this view, this circle will always look as though it's some sort of an oblong shape or, or uh, that sort of thing, which is what we need, all right? So I just drew this, it wasn't anything too difficult. What I then did is go over to my add effects and I added a glow effect, which you can see here. And so what we've got is we can choose the color, which I've cho chosen a nice electric blue. We've chosen the radius, so we can shrink this right down if we wanted to, or we can bloom this way up, but you can see how blurry that is. So you would have to change the sample site. So this is like four samples. This is 16 samples, but you can already see that even my video is beginning to chug with that. So I'm just gonna bring that back to eight and just have a sort of a nice, I think this was about 25, something like that. And of course the threshold works very much like the threshold on your glow effect in your compositor, okay? So the lower the threshold means more values um, in your grayscale are considered for the glow. So for example, if I had some more gray or blacks in this particular object, um, that would affect the threshold on what actually glows and what doesn't. One last thing that I've done is I've done the use alpha mode. What that does is it changes it from this uh, fill, which seems to, you know, blanket color the whole thing with this sort of a glow above everything, okay, to give us sort of like uh, our grease pencil is now alpha over. And so we've got that cool delineation of really intense bright inside the laser and this really nice glow effect that we can see. Now the last thing that we wanna do is add what is known as a object constraint. Why? Because when we take this camera and we rotate it around the scene, you can instantly tell that that is a 2D shape, okay? And we don't want that. So let's just bring back our guns, bring back our lights, okay? And let's just focus on this particular object right here, this laser object. The constraint that I've chosen is called a lock track constraint. Here's how it works. I'm going to enable um, under my object uh, panel, the axis for this particular grease pencil object, because what we wanna see is the axes that we are going to need to affect, okay? Because you'll see here that under the locked track, Okay, we've, got the, we've selected the target, and that is our camera. We can lock the track to a particular axis, but which one do we need? Well, we can choose a number of them. We can lock it to X, for instance. Okay, let's uh, enable that I. Uh, this has done something very, very strange. We can lock it to Y, but because our uh, lock is set to Y here, this won't actually work because it's the same axis. We can set it to Z, which basically flips it around. So you can see that this Z, uh, where the, the, the pointer which is showing us Z, right? If I was now to rotate my camera, you can see that the Z is what is always pointing towards the camera. I've set it to negative Z because that's sort of how I drew it. And for some reason that is, you know, uh, what that's done, it's pointing it away from the camera. Um, and it's saying that the, uh, the axis point that is upwards is Y, which is along the blast, okay? 
Um, and then this influence means that with an influence of zero, you can see that it's a 2D plane. But with the influence set to one, it means that it influences it at 100% of the effect. And now whenever we rotate that camera, that will always face along that axis. And you'll notice that our camera isn't exactly flat on, okay? It is uh, got a really cool um, angle that uh, incorporates X, Y, and Z rotation so that we've got some um, perspective here. So I did the same thing with this other zap, okay? This has also got that constraint on it, okay? This is just a duplicate of this particular object. I've got the same locked constraint on it, but you'll see that because it's further away from the camera, when we rotate that around, the effect is just a little bit different. It's a little bit subtly different, which is kind of cool because you don't want things that are duplicated to look exactly the same, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could just go in and edit this uh, grease pencil so it looks like a slightly different laser blast. I mean, we could do that right now. I could go into, even in camera view, go draw. If we go to the drawing plane that it was originally drawn in. So in this case, it's top X, Y. And so we can do things like add a little bit of uh, extra zap, for instance. So we go zap, zap, like that. Uh, maybe we want to fill out this point a bit like that. Maybe fill out this point even more. Okay, and so now we can very quickly edit this out to be just a little bit different from this foreground one. All right, and uh, we just go back into object mode, select our camera, and you can see that everything still works just as it did. All right, so that's a really neat trick to get um, a 2D effect to look really good in a 3D environment. And I only track one of axis because if you get this more intense angle, okay, you get that wonderful perspective effect, you know, the, 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 the converging lines, all that sort of stuff. Now, I'm gonna take you through one last thing in this tutorial, and that is rendering. I've still maintained a line work scene, okay, which I'm not gonna go into. You can take a look at the um, free EV shader tutorial to see how that's set up. Um, but what I have done is I've set up two render layers in um, my EV project. Why do I want to do this? Well, that's because if I render this image outright, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And I go ahead and render my line work as well. You can see something very, very obvious. And that is that the line work sits on top of everything that is rendered, okay? But you can see that the glows are rendered and that's really, really nice, okay? So all we've gone ahead and done is just combined uh, the, the render layer with the line work layer from the other scene uh, with an alpha over. And this isn't exactly what we want. What we want is to have those laser blasts on top of the line work, okay? So the line work is really good for your solid objects, for all of your uh, unaffected scenes, and then we want an effects layer. So here's what I went ahead and did. I created an effects layer, but you'll notice in this collection that three of these things are grayed out, which means that when we render that, only the laser blasts are going to render. How do we do this? Well, if we go back to our plates layer, we want to disable the, uh, the zap collection, which has our grease pencil objects in there. And the way we do that is uh, a shortcut is E, but I'm gonna show you by right clicking on here, you go to view layer and you have set exclude. What this does is it now excludes that collection or object or whatever you've selected from the render, okay? And so I've just gone ahead and done that in reverse with the effects layer. So now what I've got is I've got this uh, plate layer rendered, okay? You can see that it says plate layer there. I've rendered the freestyle pass. And now I can render the effects layer. And if we were just to take a look at the effects layer on its own, you can see that it's just the laser, laser blast. And if we were to take a look at the plates layer, well, we'd better re-render this. It's just the guns with the light effects and the toon shader, okay, on their own. And so now using some compositing, we can get the final effect. So we've got plate layer, we've got 
the effects layer, and of course we've got this freestyle layer in between. So let's go back to the compositor and let's uh, see what we're doing here. Okay, so we take our effects layer. I'm gonna put uh, an extra fog glow on this, and then I'm gonna alpha it over the combination of what we're seeing on screen right now. So let's have a look at that. And now we've got that wonderful effect, okay, over the top of that gun blast, all right? And those lines aren't intruding on our effect, okay? So uh, furthermore, on this alpha, I can set this to 100% so that the blast is 100% opaque, or I can bring that alpha down a little bit, okay? So that we can see the guns behind, and this effect now looks like it's more of a, you know, ethereal, uh, transparent, translucent type of thing. One final thing, and that is we alpha everything over a background, which I've done a color effect on, okay? And our completed effect is rendered, okay? So what have we got here? We've got this really cool um, model with the EV Tune shader, a freestyle line pass that comes from another scene in the uh, project file. Uh, on top of that, we've rendered our laser blast that's got a pretty cool effect, but I've gone ahead and enhanced it with a fog glow effect. And then I've composited that over a, a colored background with a bit of a, a lens flare glow. That's a very simple way of in, uh, incorporating 2D objects over your 3D objects to get really cool effects that you can sketch out very quickly. All right, so I hope you get a lot out of this. I'm gonna put this demo file in the link below the video so you can uh, take a look at it, see how it all works, and you can uh, just recreate this sort of effects in your own projects. All right, thanks guys for watching. Bye for now.